again, hi. I want to present my bachelor's project, which is parallel web application. And if I want to describe that project with one simple sentence, it would be the one you can see on screen, how systematical logging can help save fees. So before I get into the whole nitty gritty, I want to talk a bit, just give a little introduction to the people that was a part of the project. So from the right to the left, you have my friend Mikkel, my friend Johannes and me. Uh, we finished this project in, uh, in late uh, January, where we also graduated as uh, awesome engineers. So uh, <laughs> yeah, but let's get into the project. So the big picture. What is it that makes this project awesome is it's actually very important. So um, it shouldn't be a surprise that bees nowadays, the bee population is declining. And it should also not be a surprise that bees are so important for our ecosystem because bees um, without their pollination of flowers, flowers and crops doesn't bloom and kind of need that to survive. So the Danish Bee Association realized that one of the big reasons that the, the, the decline in uh, the bee population is due to mite infestations, and specifically those varroa mites we're talking about, which is hence the name. Um, so they what they wanted to do was they wanted to make a project with Aarhus University, um, with the department head being, uh, or the head of the project being Kimbia, and the whole idea of this project was to enable a beekeeper to predict when the most optimal time to treat a hive is. Because here's the thing, when you have to treat a hive for mites, first of all, you have to test the, you have to test the hive to see the density um, of mites. Is it worth to make the treatment now? Because here's the thing, when you treat and when you test, you have to kill off some bees. And every time you make a test or a treatment, there is a chance that your hive aren't going to survive or isn't going to survive. So it's so crucial to actually make sure that you predict when the most optimal time is. And that is where me and my group come in. So this we, we had some requirements. So what they wanted us to do was to take some of their legacy data or data for that matter and uh, make it possible to one display the data for the whole predictability and second of all make it easier to actually um, log the data so directly from the application you can log the data instead of having to write it down in an excel sheet and then upload it and import it so with those requirements we made um, a model of how we want our system to be which you can see on the right and it's very uh, basic. You have a beekeeper that interacts with his uh, hive. He can count, he can register a hive, and he can register some observations. Thereafter, the beekeeper can upload the registrations to the system and the cloud makes sure that everything is up to date. But with that said, we also have um, a role-based access system. And the reason we have that is because we want to make it possible for a researcher, for example, to go in and look at some of the data, um, for example, some regression data, and tweak the par parameters in case um, the current parameters aren't good enough or precise enough. So, um, so yeah, and if I haven't mentioned it, <laughs> the type of data we want to present is geographical data and regression data. One is to show, you know, the geographical part. Um, which, I, which I can show in a bit. And the second one is to show, um, is to depict when the best time is. So one is for the place, one is for the time. I'll make it easier to understand in a second. So um, personally, in our group, we wanted to uh, challenge ourselves a bit. So what we wanted out from this project was, we wanted to develop a single page application and we wanted to do it without the use of any frameworks. So something like Angular and React and uh, Vue.js, that was out of the picture. We wanted to know which kind of things would give us trouble and um, how would we fix them and would we do it in the same way that they did. So that was um, something we wanted to try out. And in the end, we also wanted to make this a usable, um, a very intuitive and usable uh, application 
which is why we try to make it as uh, intuitive and not so colorful and all kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, let me just stop talking for a second and go over to the next slide so you can see the app. So I've taken some screen dumps. It's very, um, <laughs> uh, there aren't so much colors and there aren't so many tabs or anything like that. It's very straightforward. you got a side menu and then you got uh, the big view. And that was the whole idea of it. Very intuitive. You don't have to have too much knowledge or any technological parts to be able to use this app. So, easy registration forms. What we did to actually try to make this a bit more intuitive was, for example, when you are registering your location for the app uh, or for your hive, what we did was we used some uh, auto completion features. So, um, when you start typing an address, it will start suggesting, <laughs> suggesting some um, addresses that matches the thing that you've written. On top of that, we wanted to uh, make it less error prone by using um, a map API. So we can use a map where you can just place a marker and the application will choose the closest uh, address to that marker. So by doing that, we would make it a bit more easy for, uh, for the person using it. But now comes the interesting part. So this is the heat map or density map um, that I was talking about. The whole idea with this is if you're, for example, in a green zone and you can see that there are um, red and yellow zones around you, you kind of have an idea that maybe it's time to think about testing your hive for mites and uh, you can start making preparations that way. Um, so the whole idea was this was to give you a bit of an like, idea of where you are um, or where the density of mites are in um, in Denmark. Um, so that was like the geographical part. When you look at the time part, we use regression, it's the line of regression to make uh, this prediction. So um, what we have here is basically time on our first axis and then density of mites on our uh, second axis. And we have a damage threshold, which means that if you end up above that line, you can be kind of sure that your hive is not going to survive. Um, and with the yellow line, you know that you should probably treat the hive. And with the green prediction line, you can see that, okay, if my, um, if my observation is around a specific uh, week, that means that two weeks from now would be a proper time to actually uh, treat. So uh, this was our way to try to make it possible, uh, given the provide data, to uh, predict when and uh, when to actually treat. Um, to to make it more likely that your hive will survive. Um, with that said, there actually isn't very much to it. So if you want to conclude on something, well, did we achieve what you wanted to? Well, from the requirements perspective, we did. We made it possible to see, um, depending on the data we, we got, we could see the um, where in Denmark the density is highest. And we can also see, depending on the data we got, when the most optimal time is. We also made it uh, possible for uh, um, a stakeholder to actually tweak the parameters because until we actually get this in production, we don't really know if, uh, for example, a, a line of regression fit is the true fit, if it's the, the best ideal model um, for prediction. Um, so with that said, we just what we can say from all this is that data is important. Without this data, we couldn't, uh, we weren't able to actually predict something. We would uh, rely on probability and just guessing. So data is important to save the bees. <laughs> and uh, with that said, I didn't really go into the whole um, technical part of it, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, catch me on anywhere you want. And uh, for a bit of further reading, Orbit Lab got, a, got a, this project in its portfolio. So yeah, that's it.